kufanya kitu hapa ujenge nyumba ama ununue gari watu wa KWS wanaona tu ati unaingia kwa msitu unaona kuna nyayo kwa mlango hii nyayo kwa mlango hii hii ndio alifuja nayo aiomba kufuja akaingia will it man its death represent something to people who have been untouched by extrajudicial killings urani garu military furan gari sadi as far as i'm concerned in the inquiry file we only have one case as i'm speaking to you You need not say much to sell Kenya's coastline. Its beauty is effortless and alluring. And for a time, these beaches were Kenya's welcome promise to the world, a land of no worries, hakuna matata. That's not so easy to say anymore. November the 8th, 2014. We are rushing to the scene of a reported gunfight in downtown Mombasa. This is a tail end of a bloody year down at the coast. In this same year, dozens of men, including three controversial Muslim clerics, were gunned down allegedly by the police. They all were alleged to be on a kill list drafted by what is one of Kenya's most feared units, the anti-terrorism police unit. Many of the crime scenes look the same. The same scene greets us on this day. You can see this on the bullet marks. a bullet-riddled vehicle with traces of blood inside. Its occupants are said to have been a man and two women. It didn't end well for the man. Before long, we're directed to his home. The man is Hassan Nasrullah Musa, alias Guti. According to press reports at the time, Guti had been on a police watch list as a suspected member of a youth terror cell and criminal gang. Angry friends and relatives swear he's innocent, asking us to look at his corpse. In another room, His wife, who was with him in the car, is inconsolable. I heard him shout. When I looked at him, I saw him dead already. But the other person behind was shouting. You didn't see any car or any person? I saw nothing. But it was his him. All what I saw is my husband dead. Guti's killing capped off a year in which more than two human rights organizations presented proof that extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearances were being perpetrated in coastal Kenya under the pretext of fighting terrorism. But some pockets of grief here speak to another side of this story. Kama nguvu manangu ngaletu nikiwa kwa ukumbuka mimi napata tab ukumbuka mimi nateseka ukumbuka niko na shida kuna siku alitafutwa kulingana kuna kuna yeye mwenye ndo alikuwa atuambia jina lake lilitolewa aliondoka tu nyumbani siku hiyo jioni hakurudi tena manake hakuaga mtu mimi kaamini kweli angoenda alishababu kweli manake alikuwa yeye wapenda kusema nyenye amda kamilika uislamu uislamu mtu afe shahid eh amujui jihad nyenye kazi yenu kukaa tu hapo These women all bear the scarlet letter of having kin who now fight for Kenya's enemies and all of their stories mirror Fatma's. Kijana mzuri, mtana chati, ni kijana ambaye wanisikiza, ni kijana wa kunipenda. Lakini kitu kilichoshangaa, maana kesi siwezi kusema ati ni yule kijana. Mimi nalaumu unasema ni watu wazima ambao walofanya kumshawishi yule mtoto kuondoka hapa. Mombasa 
na bila kunishauri mimi akawa ni mwimpaji fulani uonekana mwimpaji he 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 lakini unajulikana nani mwimpaji ushanifahamu yule mtu wake uba kama wenda zake masjid kule akaenda kule masjid akielezewa katika ile darsa letu ambapo ni akija nyumbani anapea mama vibaya kuimba kesho kifa akhera utakwenda kuulizwa mwenye kuimba iwafufuliwa Osha fam, ah kama basi sasa leo chef organize makartasi na nini na nini nataka kupata tu sapose tu ya kupata mtu akushikilie kuimba. Sasa itakuwaje ama msitaki tena mimi nataka kuwa yani na swali tu msikiti na nini na nini. Osha ona. Haka yu hatoki huo msikiti. Huo msikiti wenye balaa. Maana yule msikiti na uta wenye balaa. Na usikiti uko pale pale, miaka yote uko pale pale. Lakini ni watu. Osha fam. The mosque she is talking about is a Masjid Musa. One of the largest mosques in the Majengo area, it has been the focus of attention by Kenya's police on claims that it served as a venue for the radicalization of the young. One of its most infamous imams was Sheikh Abu Drogo, who never hid his views on the youth fighting alongside the Al-Shabaab. Hama katika nchi hii. Hama ndugu zako wa kuita watakupa silaha. Watakupa mafunzo. Ukitaka mke watakupa. Ukitaka riski watakupa. Hama. Na usifikirie mtu akienda Somalia upa bunduki ingia. Ah ah urongo bwana. Kwa ile mawaidha yake Masaidi yatoa na mawaidha na vijana wetu ni kama hao sasa wakasikia wakasikia ikawafate ikawapata kuna wengine mpaka saa hizi wataka kuja rent pia wende sio shauna sasa na wengine pengine kama hivi tunaongea pengine mwingine hapa saa hii wanaondoka waenda kesho wengine pengine waondoka hivi kama sisi tunasema kina Muhammad dogo waondoka mwaka siku jana kama juu kuna wengine saa hii waondoka robo alikuwa kwa rafiki yao mkubwa ambaye alikuwa kwa kai mtani tuko naye mtani kutoka sisi ni wadogo mpaka tunkwa ni mtu ambaye tuamjua ni mtu yani tunka kambo sisi ni ndo ni wetu tuko kwa sana mm. aside from listening to imams like Sheikh Rogo Fatma also alleges that something more sinister was going on at the mosque hiyo darasa usiku siku ilikuwa ni ya nini Fatma is convinced that her son was radicalized at the mosque. Before long, their sons and brothers began to leave for Somalia. Left behind were women shattered by this betrayal. <laughs> These mothers and sisters represent hundreds of homes broken by radicalization. The first step should be dialogue. People need to talk to each other. Uh, and uh, we might be having our differences. Uh, the system, the government, the community, the leadership. But I think we need to sit down and agree at what point can we, you know, come into uh, agreement. What the disappearances and killings have done is given the Al Shabab fodder for its propaganda machine. Toka ndugu yangu Muislam. Mambo ya kukamjini kwisha. One that has drawn numbers into its ranks and left lives shattered. <laughs>